University of Maryland, 76, Villanova, 75. You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Fourgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Big win for the Terps today at the Prudential Center. A great come from behind victory. The Terps were losing at halftime by 12, all right, 40 to 28. Offense could not get going, but it did in the second half because they scored 48 points. And let's start off by talking about the two stars of this game. One for Villanova. Got to give credit where credit is due. Eric Dixon was just everything advertised. He was fantastic. All right. 36 points, 15 for 29, five trays out of 11 shots, three for three from the foul line. Uh, only had four rebounds. Maybe that was the only weak part of the game. But offensively, he was just everything for this team. And it wasn't enough, though, because Maryland came storming back, led by Derek Queen. 16 points in the second half, wound up with 22. He's everything advertised. I said it the first time I saw him play. He reminded me of Nikola Jokic. The MVP, no, he's not Jokic, but sure enough, Jay Williams had the same comment. His game, he's so smart. He is so basketball smart that it's hard to imagine with his passes, his assists. I think he wound up with five assists today, probably most of them to Julia Reese. And Reese had a great game today. Uh, he had 18 points. He had 40 between our bigs. And the rest of the way, Rodney Rice, let me tell you, Rodney Rice, 16 points. If he didn't score in the first half like he did, this would have been a long night. He kept us in the game barely, all right? Jacoby Gillespie didn't do much until the very end, and then he caught fire. It was pretty cool to see uh, Malachi Palmer, the freshman, and Jalen Young, uh, the, another transfer, uh, each make a three-point shot, I believe. But uh, basically, it came. the points came, as they always do, from four or five guys, all right? Deshaun Harris-Smith only had two, uh, drew the task of uh, guarding Dixon a little bit and played hard. Uh, he's kind of like the sixth man now because Rodney Rice is not coming out of that starting lineup. He is just too important to this team scoring-wise. But Derek Queen, first of all, what about this stuff? Uh, in late in the game, coming from the right to the left and throwing it back down. And the one-foot fadeaway shot off his right foot. Any basketball player knows how tough that is. Derek Queen made baskets from every angle. He was just beyond special. But uh, 9 for 14, 22 total. Foul shooting, he missed three, but he made the two that mattered to won the game. Uh, he had a total of 11 rebounds, five assists. Four turnovers was too many, but guys who make as many as assists as he do, big guys, usually will have a few turnovers. But overall, he was he was excellent. And this was a game Maryland had to have. Villanova somehow in was three and three. They lost to Columbia. I, I still don't believe it. Uh 90 to 80. And they were not, and they took this game like it was life or death. But I want to tell you something. This would have been a killer if Maryland lost because you would have had another big non-conference loss. You don't have that now. So you're one and one. You play Marquette, who should be in the top 10, not just in the top 15. You played Marquette to the wire. Marquette's a great team. Uh, and now you got one coming up in a couple weeks against, uh, I think, the 21st at the Barclays Center against uh, Syracuse, who's doing very well so far. But this is one they had to have. Every time you lose one of these non-conference games that are important, I mean, you can't call these games like when Maryland played Canisius important. It was ridiculous. It was so one-sided. But not today. Maryland got off to a slow start. I, I don't think, I'm sure they knew about Eric Dixon. I'm not sure they knew how good he was. This guy really could hit a hit from anywhere. I was really impressed by him. I know he'll be a first-round pick in the NBA draft this year. As Derek Queen probably will be if he does leave. Derek Queen was incredible. I don't have much else to say about it, but he was definitely on target. Uh, you know, forced, helped us win. Disappointed him and Selton Miguel today after his great game the other day. 
did not score. All right, play 23 minutes and not scoring is not good. So Terp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jack Litch Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1. But as you know, Coach, it's not the last win, it's the next win that's so important. And that's why we continue to hustle, continue to work so hard for all of our clients to earn that name, the Big Dogs from the small firm. Just like you do. You get your guys hustling all the time. That's why we love you, Rick. And most of all, go, go Terps. Terps. Uh, Reese, 32 minutes. Jacoby Gillespie, 38. Rodney Rice, 34. Selton, 32. I mean, the minutes are not spread out that great. Reese, 32. And Derek Queen, 35. And Deshaun, 16. And he trickled in some of the other guys. And they did uh, perform... But the bottom line right now is they're five and one. That's what we wanted. Our next game is Wednesday afternoon at the almost incredible time of four thirty in the afternoon, the day before Thanksgiving. And then next Sunday, uh, Alcorn State at noon, and then December the fourth, a week from Wednesday, the big one, six thirty against Ohio State at home, to be followed up four days later on Sunday. Uh, at Purdue, also at high noon, and uh, and that's where we stand right now. Two conference games out of the next four, a couple, let's call them practice games, but uh, they're important. Got one, Alcorn and Bucknell. So uh, that's where we stand, five and one, great win, happy to see it. Uh, they needed it, they got it, and that's the bottom line. They played great down the wire, and that's what you have to do to win tough games. So that'll do it for myself, Bruce Posner, real quick. If you, anybody saw that commander game today, Wayne and Mason were there. I felt sorry for him. I've never seen a more insane ending than that game. You got to put it on YouTube to watch or put it watch the highlights. I've never seen anything like it in my life. A 85-yard touchdown was basically the last play on a play where the, uh, where the Cowboys – it was just a regular play, and the guy extended it to the end zone. you think they'd have five guys 40 yards away that would have tackled uh, Terry McLaren. And Terry McLaren is not a speedster, but he outran the, he outran the entire Dallas team. But division games are tough. And Maryland will find out tomorrow because they've got one against uh, the Chargers. And it's rumored that Roquan and... Tyler Lindenbaum might not play. That does not bode well for the Baltimore Ravens. And, of course, we know the Maryland lost to uh, Rutgers uh, yesterday. Uh, what was it? 29-13, uh, to 13, somewhere in that ball game, but it wasn't close. Close for a while, but not, not for too long. That's going to do it for today anyway. Great news out of College Park and uh, out of the Prudential Center. The women won a, a, just a... It was, I didn't even know what the score was at halftime. It was so lopsided. Uh, St. Francis, I think they were up by 50. I don't even know. But the men won a big game against Villanova, and that will do it for today. Uh, have a great week, everybody. And again, we'll be back probably Wednesday after the game. Take care. Remember, Turp Talk Wednesday at 6 p.m. here on uh, 1300 AM The Bet. Take care.